إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide and whomsoever Allah misguides, then no one can guide. I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and he has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah with the fear that is due to him and do not die except as a Muslim. O mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single person. And from that person, he created his wife. And from the two of them, he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off family ties. Indeed, Allah is an all watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright. If you do this, Allah will rectify for you your deeds and he will forgive you of your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger has attained a great achievement. As for that which follows indeed the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah, the Qur'an. And the best and the finest of guidance is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an innovation in the religion. And every innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, the hadith of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه ليس شيء أكرم على الله من الدعاء He said there is nothing that is more honorable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than supplication. And the reason why a dua has this status and this virtue and merit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because when a person makes dua then this shows his inability and his weakness. And that he does not have the power or the might to do anything or to achieve anything except by the permission and the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars explain that when it comes to supplication, then it is of two types. Dua al ibadah and dua al mas'ala. As for dua al ibadah, then this includes all forms of worship. Whether it's an act of worship that takes place upon a person's limbs, such as the prayer, or an act of worship that takes place in the heart, such as fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or a monetary act of worship, such as paying the zakat and yani, giving sadaqah. As for dua al mas'ala, as for dua al mas'ala, the scholars they say that this is when a person directly asks and he requests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him that which is beneficial and to repel every type of harm and detriment from him. And this form of worship, or this type of dua rather, this is considered the essence of, of worship. As the Prophet ﷺ said, 
as it comes in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhuma, ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. He said, ad-du'a is worship. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the verse, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دَعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will respond to you. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ and whoever turns away from my worship, or whoever is arrogant regarding my worship, then he will enter the hellfire in disgrace. And it's very crucial that when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that our hearts are present. And that we have a good thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as His servant thinks of Him. So when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should have certainty that He's going to respond to our supplication. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اُدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَنْتُمْ مُوْقِنُونَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ He says, supplicate to Allah, while having certainty that He's going to respond to your supplication. So when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the response for that supplication is taking a long time, it's taking longer than what we, than what we, what we would like, then we should not despair and we should not lose hope. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ He said, your supplication will be answered as long as you're not hasty. يَقُولْ دَعُوتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ A person says, I supplicated, but my supplication was not answered. So if a person is constantly supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him with wealth, or to bless him with a good wife, to bless him with a good job and children and other than this, and then weeks go by, and months go by, or years go by, and his supplication never comes into fruition, it never happens. Then a person should not say that, I've been making dua for all of this time, all of these years, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still not responded to my supplication. This is not correct. This is not the mentality of a true believer. This is, how, this is not how a person should behave. This is having bad manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is going to be a reason for his supplication not being answered. And we always have to keep in mind that when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that entails sin or transgression. We're being sincere in our supplication. We're eagerly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something of benefit. Then there's no way that we're going to lose out in this situation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَدْعُوا بِدَعْوَةٍ مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَدْعُوا بِدَعْوَةٍ لَيْسَ فِيهَا إِثْمٌ وَلَا قَطِيعَةُ رَحِمٌ إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا إِحْدَ ثَلَاثٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no Muslim who supplicates with an invocation. He supplicates for something. And it does not entail sin or cutting off family ties. Meaning that a person is not asking Allah to facilitate for him to commit a sin, and he's not supplicating against his relatives. Except that Allah will give him either one of three. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expedite the response to his supplication. Allah will quickly answer his supplication in this world. Or either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save it for him in the hereafter. Meaning that Allah will give him the reward for his supplication in the hereafter. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy upon him and forgive him of his sins in the hereafter. وَإِمَّا أَن يُصْرَفَ عَنْهُ مِنَ السُّوءِ مِثْلُهَا Or either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repel a similar amount of harm from this individual. قَالُوا إِذَا نُكْثِرُ So when the companions heard this, they said, therefore we're going to increase in making supplication. قَالَ اللَّهُ أَكْثَرُ And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more abundant. Meaning that He's more abundant when it comes to answering the supplication of His servants. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ All praise and thanks belong to Allah, the Lord. Of everything that exists. 
The good end is for those who possess piety. وَلَا عُذْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ There is no transgression except against those who oppress. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's alone and he has no partners. هُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ He aids and he supports those who are righteous. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم And I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is a slave and his messenger. أما بعد It was collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih from the hadith of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن الله طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا Indeed Allah سبحانه وتعالى is good and he only accepts that which is good. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the believers with that which He has commanded the messengers with. فَقَالَ تَعَالَى And He said subhanahu wa ta'ala يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلْ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَاعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا And He said the meaning of the verse O messengers, eat of that which is good and do righteous deeds. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ And likewise he said the meaning of the verse, O you who believe, eat of that which is good, which we have provided for you. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلْ يَطِيلُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned the situation of a man who's on a long journey, and his hair is disheveled. يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ and this individual, he raises his hands up to the sky. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. And he says, My Lord, My Lord. Wa mat'amuhu haram. And his food is haram. Wa mashrabuhu haram. And his drink is haram. Wa malbasuhu haram. And his clothing is haram. Wa ghudhiya bil haram. And his nourishment is haram. Fa'anna yustajabu li dhalik. So how could his supplication be answered? And this hadith of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it highlights to us the great danger of eating from the haram. And that is a reason that will prevent a person's supplication from being answered. And a lot of times when a person hears this hadith, or reads this hadith, then the first thing that comes into his mind is that this is applicable only to eating pork, or eating an animal that was not slaughtered correctly, or eating something that's not permissible. And this is the case. However, it's not restricted to this. The scholars explain that eating from the haram is also applicable to those individuals who earn wealth, they earn income in a manner that's not permissible. Whether that means going to a bank and taking out an interest-based loan and then starting a business. Or selling things that are not permissible. Unfortunately, you have a lot of our brothers, they have gas stations or they have bodegas, and they sell pork, they sell wine, they sell lottery tickets, and they do all of these type of things. And in some cases, when you ask these individuals about this, they think that it's okay for a Muslim to sell these things as long as they're selling it to a disbeliever. So as long as they're selling pork, it's fine as long as the person who's buying is a disbeliever. As long as they're selling intoxicants, it's okay as long as the person who's buying it is a disbeliever. As long as they're selling lottery tickets and the person who's buying it is a disbeliever, then it's okay. And this is not the case. That which is impermissible for us is also impermissible for the disbelievers. A person cannot facilitate these type of things even for the disbelievers. So when a Muslim is selling these type of things and he doesn't have any type of concern, he doesn't care if he's eating from the haram, he doesn't care if he's drinking the haram. He doesn't care if his clothing is from the haram. He doesn't care if his nourishment is from the haram. Then he subjects himself to being punished in this world as well as the hereafter. And likewise, his supplication will not be answered. As the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لذلك. So how could his supplication be answered? So what's understood from this is that committing sins and being persistent upon sins especially major sins, and not repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is considered one of the main reasons for a person's supplication not being answered. And this is why when we're committing sins, we're indulging in sins, and we have no regard 
then we should not be astonished. And we, cannot, and we should not be amazed when the response for our supplication is not coming. When our supplication is not being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was stated by a poet. He said, نَحْنُ نَدْعُ الْإِلَهَ فِي كُلِّ كَرْبٍ ثُمَّ نَنْسَهُ عِنْدَ كَشْفِ الْكُرُوبِ He said, we supplicate to Allah during every hardship and affliction. And then we forget about Him when that affliction is removed. And unfortunately, this is the situation of the vast majority of us. That when we're going through hardships and difficulties, then we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we beg and we beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, once that affliction or the calamity is removed, then we forget about Allah jalla wa'ala. And this is the opposite of how a believer should be. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَيْ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ he said, get to know Allah during times of ease, and He will remember you during times of difficulty. The poet, he went on and he said, كَيْفَ نَرْجُوا إِجَابَةً لِدُعَاءٍ قَدْ سَدَدْنَا طَرِيقَهَا بِالذُّنُوبِ He said, how can we hope for a response to our supplication? How can we hope that Allah is going to answer our supplication, and we have already blocked His path with sins? اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for guidance, piety, chastity, and contentment. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. We ask our Lord for the good of this world and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. اللهم إنا نسألك بأسمائك الحسنى. وصفاتك العليا أن تنصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم عليك باليهود المعتدين اللهم عليك باليهود المعتدين اللهم دمرهم تدميرا اللهم, اللهم جعل الدائرة عليهم يا قوي يا عزيز وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم